In 2017, two developers named John Watkinson and Matt Hall created a program to automate the creation of 10,000 punk avatars. They then modified a standard Ethereum smart contract to include a hash for the 24-pixel punk image and added ownership and transfer functions. The crypto punks were released for free, and anyone with a MetaMask wallet in the summer of that year could have claimed one. Today, they're considered seminal to the entire NFT movement, and the most common of these punks are worth more than 30,000 US dollars. Some have sold for millions. So how do non-fungible tokens work? First, we need a basic understanding of the Ethereum virtual machine. Consider a peer-to-peer -peer network where the code known as smart contracts are executed by all the connected computers across the world, and a consensus is reached confirming the results of that code. If a user executes a smart contract function to calculate 2 plus 2, all the computers of the network agree that it answers 4, and that output is finalised to a blockchain. An NFT is a smart contract that runs on this Ethereum virtual machine, which contains data and ownership information. Everything we consume online can be broken down into data. Images, music, text, video, it's all ones and zeros. A unique representation of that data known as a hash can be stored in an NFT smart contract. Ownership of that data can be transferred between Ethereum accounts using smart contract functions. In practice, creator will use an app like Rarible to upload an image and put it up for sale without ever needing to understand the elegant beauty of the underlying technology. In December 2020, Bitcoin entered a new bull market and NFTs became the most talked about digital asset. That's when things started to get a little bit weird. An artist called Beeple, who had been creating one piece of art every day for over 13 years, started minting his artwork as NFTs. These became highly valued, which culminated in a piece of art known as the first 5,000 days being auctioned at the infamous Christie's Auction House in London. It was the first NFT to go on sale at a prestigious fine art auction, and it didn't disappoint. When the hammer dropped, the leading bid was 69 million US dollars. So NFTs are clearly useful for monetizing artwork. They can also be used in the same way to sell music rights, with the Kings of Leon recently minting NFTs. Perhaps the most interesting use case is the sale of digital land. Let's enter the metaverse. This is the central land, a 3D world where you can roam around, chat to other users, gamble away your cryptocurrency, and browse galleries of digital art. It's a little rough around the edges, but in my opinion it provides a glimpse of what the next big social network might look like. I'm not saying that the central land specifically will become as big as Facebook, just that it feels like there's something interesting and compelling happening in this sector. It's just not quite ready yet. Land here is valuable too, and it's sold as NFT tokens of course. You can purchase land and import 3D objects and buildings into your space. So, how can you invest in NFTs, and what are the risks? You'll need an Ethereum wallet such as Metamask and some cryptocurrency. You can then make purchases using the secondary market like OpenSea as easily as checking out of an online store. NFTs are stored in your digital wallet and you can list them for resale as you wish. A market for flipping NFTs has developed in the last six months and it's become a lucrative business for many. One consideration that anyone interested in NFTs needs to be aware of is the lack of resale liquidity. It's not like buying Bitcoin where you can always sell it again at market price. There are collectors with hundreds of NFT pieces who might only sell one or two in a good week. Think of it more like buying art in a gallery and accepting that it's going to be difficult to resell unless it becomes highly collectible in the future. The lack of liquidity could potentially become more of a problem if the general cryptocurrency markets take a downturn. There are, of course, more buyers when everything's going up in value. If NFT prices start to drop, it could create a vicious cycle where demand disappears completely. The counter-argument is that we're still early, and as markets mature, demand will naturally increase as new entrants discover the space. There are signs that the sector is maturing already, with projects like NFTX who created the punk token, enabling the fragmentization of NFT assets. They essentially buy up crypto punks and put them in an index fund which can be bought and sold on Uniswap. A user can take out a $10 position in punk to gain a small exposure to the underlying assets. NFT index funds could increase demand through fractional ownership and somewhat solve some of the liquidity problems, making it a more attractive investment. That being said, it's still early and both the risk and the reward are exceptionally high. In my mind, non-fungible tokens have an important part to play in the future of digital assets and tokenization. But for digital art, I think it could go either way. There are plenty of examples in the past where items have become highly collectible and over time the demand has just disappeared. At one point, 10% of eBay's sales were made up of Beanie Babies, and these cute and cuddly toys were selling for up to $400,000 US dollars. In contrast to this, some items really do hold their value. And the obvious example is kind of oil paintings from the Renaissance period, which is still extremely collectible, even priceless today. So perhaps not all NFTs and digital art and collectibles will be valuable in 10 years time. But I think maybe the top 1% BB or before Beeple has a chance to become truly collectible.